In this video, I'm going to be showing you exactly how to use the Celestron Power Seeker 127 EQ. And as you can see, I've already gone ahead and set up my telescope. So if you are yet to do that, that is of course the first step. Now I do have an entire video on my channel which walks you through step by step exactly how you can do that. So if that sounds of interest to you, then be sure to check that out first. Otherwise, I now want to show you how you can get the most out of this telescope and give yourself the best chances of observing the moon and the planets of the solar system, which is what this telescope is best for. But before I begin, I do just want to quickly discuss the mount and how this telescope is designed. Now EQ, which we can see on the side here, that stands for equatorial. Now, this is a style of mount that gives you the ability to track objects manually across the sky. You are in complete control, but there are reasons for this design too. As Earth turns on its axis, the sky appears to rotate. So unless a telescope is motorised, which this telescope is not, when you look through the eyepiece, objects will appear to move and you will no longer be able to see them. So EQs, or equatorial mounts, are designed in such a way that once you find your target, you can continue tracking them and keep them in your field of view. And, and I will explain how to do this shortly. But before I do, I want to walk you through the different parts to be aware of and how we can maximize our success with this telescope. I'd first like to introduce you to the alignment parts. Now, these aren't to be used for observing or looking for targets. So there are two to be aware of. The first is the altitude knob, which we can see positioned right here. Now, this essentially allows us to move the telescope up and down. So I'm just going to show you. So you thread this through and then you can basically turn it in two different directions. If I just stand back and try and keep my camera nice and still, you should see that the telescope is starting to point more upright. So this helps us basically get the angle we are looking for. Now the second one, so as you can see, I'm going clockwise here, it's going upward. If I go the other way, the telescope will start to uh, reduce downward. So that's the first one. Now the second part to be aware of is the azimut knob. And that's here, you'll see that here. So essentially, when loosened, this will allow you to move the telescope left and right. So I'm just undoing that now, going counterclockwise, and you should see I can now move this left and right. When that's locked, the telescope will be locked into position. I now want to show you the right extension axis. Now I'm going to step around the telescope in order to show you this. And it's this knob here we are focusing on, okay? So if I unscrew this, that was tight to begin with, then that allows us to move our telescope in this direction. Now of course that will help us to identify different objects. Once we've found our object, we want to secure this in place. So I'm going clockwise in order to do that, and now this telescope will not move on that particular axis. We have the declination axis, which is this one here. It's the one above, if you can imagine it that way. Okay. Now, this allows us to move the telescope towards and away from a celestial pole. So again, we want that loose when looking for targets and then locked when we're observing. So I've just unscrewed that and you'll see now this moves on that particular angle. And then we have our slow motion controls, for which there are two of them. One here and one here. Now we use these once we have found our target for centering and for fine adjustments. And you ju basically just use them uh, accordingly like this. And it basically just keeps objects that we are observing within our field of view. It's making micro adjustments. So now we need to align our finder scope. So I've just turned the telescope around and I've also manipulated the mount and the axes because what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to focus on this chimney. That's a good kind of distance for something for you to focus on. 
Now what we need to do here to align the finder scope is to manipulate these screws. Then what we're trying to do is to get the object, so this chimney here, in the centre. Now once we've kind of done that, we can then move between the finder scope and the eyepiece and basically ensure that the object is centred in both. So with that all in mind, we can begin to use the telescope. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is to ensure that the telescope is balanced. So make sure that all of the tripod legs are fully extended uh, and make sure they are all in the same place. You also want to make sure you're on a level surface, otherwise you're going to lose the stability and it will just make tracking objects far more challenging, if not entirely impossible. It's now time to set your latitude. So in order to do that, just head over to Google and search for your location and then the word latitude. And that will give you the number you're looking for. And at that point, you just need to set your latitude with the dial until it matches. So you'll see here as I do this, you'll get that set accordingly. We now need to move on to the declination axis, which is this one here. Again, make sure it's unscrewed and you'll notice that that then moves the telescope. Hopefully you can see that. Like that. But once you've got that in position, again, lock it in place. You now should be polar aligned. Now it's important to remember that you shouldn't touch the mount from this point forward. If you move the mount for whatever reason, then you will need to polar align again. So, we're polar aligned, what do we do? First, you want to find a target. So as an example, and perhaps the best thing to observe with this telescope is the moon. Now, I recommend starting with the lowest eyepiece. So with this particular telescope, it's gonna be the 20 millimeter. This will give you the widest field of view. And you only want to switch this to the 10 millimeter that you also get included once you are centered on your target. So as an example, that would be the moon. You want to leave the Barlow lens off completely until you are focused on your target and want to magnify it in. Trying to find a target with the Barlow lens on is very, very challenging. At this point, you may also want to move to a Sky app on your phone or perhaps even pick up a star chart to find new objects. So assuming the moon was over here, we'd basically just go through and manipulate the knobs, um, unlocking the access and basically pivoting the telescope over there. So if I was to do that for you now, we'd essentially be doing something like this. And then of course, we'd need to lock it in place. So that's how to use the Celestron PowerSeeker 127EQ. I hope this video is useful. Any questions, comments, feedback, drop them down below and I'll get back to you. And with that said, best of luck with this telescope and I hope you have some fantastic views of the solar system and the moon with it.